The first work of yours that I ever heard was, I don't know, I would say at least 15 years ago. And I was standing, waiting to walk on stage and play the Gina Stara Concerto, and they started the concert with Blue Cathedral. What I was so struck by was the combination of power and magic. I realized I wanted enough slow music because the harp is so exquisite sounding, and I also realize that I feel like not enough people think of the harp, the power of the harp, and the fact that it can get a groove going. It can do more than most people assume. Exactly. And see, you get that. Yeah. perception of the audience because in a way you're also selling the instrument to the audience exactly every piece I play yeah I feel like I'm an ambassador of the heart that's it that's you know? it exactly I think sometimes about these heart concertos that somehow I have this image in my mind of the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> this incredibly precious artifact is just hoisted on a lift and put on the top shelf in the National Archives to gather yeah. dust. And I want to have a piece yeah. that more than just I will play. Right. For me, the inspiration is always the performer. I start with a performer and then I back up and look at the, the instrument, but it's just the collection of ideas. But there's so many colors and cool things going on. But then you told me that you had been inspired mm -hmm. with that movement yeah. by my relationship with my daughter. It was That's... striking though in a really sweet, tender way. I literally sat down and I thought, are there lullabies and other concertos? I... Well, it's so heart-wrenchingly beautiful. And I was just so touched that that, that had been somewhere back in your mind because, yeah. you know, I think that's something that I'll always treasure, that when I play that movement or when I hear that yeah, movement, yeah. you know, I'll think of my daughter. The music is joyful. It really is, yeah. it is just a let loose kind of... It's a celebration. <laughs>